Sanitation Authority publishes an annual safety review that records the numbers and causes of accidents worldwide over the previous 12 months. In 1997 alone, there were 54 fatal airline accidents worldwide, an average of more than one week. 1,190 passengers lost their lives. Surprisingly, given the commonly held view that non-scheduled or charter flights are somehow less safe than scheduled, both categories suffered nearly the same number of fatal disasters. With air crew error featuring in three-fourths of all fatal accidents, it's easy to lay the blame at the pilot and cabin crew's feet. But rarely is it the only factor. Modern aircraft and their associated systems have become increasingly complex. Training, especially in underdeveloped countries, can barely keep up with rapid developments in the industry. Other common causes for accidents include runway incursions, which are usually caused by airport vehicles interfering with aircraft as they land or take off. Even without that interference, half of all accidents occur during approach and landing. The list of less common factors that can contribute to an air disaster is virtually limitless. These include running out of fuel and mid-air collisions. Ground crews can contribute to a disaster through operations errors. In one instance, a plane was filled with the wrong type of fuel. Hangar mistakes are often not listed as causes until late in investigations, so any result in accidents could be recorded as air crew error. Also, low budget airlines with poorer standards may allow crews to fly with safety defects that others would ground aircraft for. Subcontracting of labor is a common money-saving strategy used by airlines and was a factor in the crash of Value Jet Flight 592 in May of 1996. The DC-9 crashed, nose first at more than 500 miles per hour into the swampy Everglades, killing all 110 people on board. The NTSB concluded that the crash was caused by a fire in the cargo hold fueled by oxygen-generating canisters, which had been improperly handled and labeled by the low-cost airline's maintenance contractor. System failure figures highly in the list of key accident causes. The pilot of this Boeing 737 knew that he had to bring the plane in with one set of wheels folded uselessly beneath him. the last minute, he aborted. Four attempts later, bringing the plane in within feet of the perimeter fence, he finally touched down. Passengers escaped, extremely shaken, but unhurt. Even hijacking is listed among the causes of airline crashes. November 1996. A startled tourist captures the scene as a hijacked Ethiopian jet with 175 people on board crashes into the water off the Comoros Islands in the Indian Ocean. Only 50 survived the hijackers' forced suicide pact. During the four-hour ordeal, the plane lost an engine and its communications. One of the hijackers, bolstered by a bottle of whiskey, decided to fly the plane himself. As the crippled jet ran out of fuel, the pilot, who had been hijacked twice before, and the co-pilot, who had been bludgeoned with an axe, wrestled back control to lift the sinking airliner over a hotel and into the shallow water. The 
difference in safety standards between the best and the worst regions of the world is common knowledge in the air industry. According to industry data, the region with the consistently worst safety in the world is Africa, followed closely by Latin America and the Caribbean. Next comes Asia, China, the Indian subcontinent, Eastern Europe, and the CIS former Soviet states, which are significantly worse than they were as the USSR. The safest regions are Western Europe, North America, the Middle East, and Australasia, which boasts one of the safest airlines in the world, Qantas, which has never had an accident. The disparity between the least and the most safe is massive. You are 16 times more likely to die on a domestic African flight than on an American one. Latin America is only half as bad as Africa, but nearly twice as dangerous as Southeast Asia. In fact, third world nations operate only 12% of the world's fleet, but record an accident rate that is 10 times that of developed countries. The FAA provides some help with a program that ranks foreign government's oversight of their airlines, but only if they fly into the U.S. Alarmingly, Initial assessments revealed two-thirds of the countries did not meet international safety standards. But the FAA program covers barely half of the nearly 200 countries that conduct international flights. There are no laws that require countries to disclose their airline's safety records. Eject, eject! Coming up, a look at the military, when air disasters returns on TLC. Travelers would assume that the airline their travel agents booked them